Live from our newsroom, it's the Hard Times Podcast! With Bill Conway and Matt Sangham. Keith Buckley, thanks for coming on the podcast. I need to tell you about the time that I got an STD. Oh, Thanks wow. for having me, and right, right off the jump, <laughs> yep. So, it. yeah, Keith, I didn't want to know how you're doing, how you've been, how uh, <laughs> any of the lockdown has affected you. We need to talk about yeah. the time that Matt got an STD. Okay, Keith, been dying so, to talk about it. Okay. So, I had unprotected sex. It was not a very bright move, but I did oh, it. Very you braggy. Married? You, you know were married, what? right? I was <laughs> married twice. Um, no, I was not married. I was single. This was several years ago. Unprotected sex. Don't regret it, but it was a bad decision. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm playing video games later. And uh, <laughs> like my neck is stiff. I'm like, man, my, my neck's Strangely all... Strangely enough, wearing a condom <laughs> while playing the video games. Though, like <laughs> yeah, that's... Pro- you had a prophylactic on for Call of Duty. But... <laughs> so I had been, I had like pissed a couple times that day and I like kind of stung. And I was like, mm-hmm. uh-oh, this isn't good, right? And then I'm playing video games and my neck is is all stiff, like starts to get mm-hmm. super stiff, right? And I feel my forehead. I'm like, oh, shit, I think I might have a fever. I'm not sure what's going on, right? One of my friends who I'm playing video games with is a doctor, very bright guy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah man, yeah, I had unprotected sex a couple of days ago. My pee, it stings. My neck is sore. And he's like, your neck is sore? I guess that's yeah, like that's a really a- bad one. Is so, it really? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, like meningitis or something? It's like... Mm-hmm. If you have a fever and a sore neck, you're supposed to go to the hospital like now. Um, Whoa. So I stopped playing video games with my friends. I got in the car. I drove to the ER because I didn't want to make an appointment, which I know is, sounds kind of annoying, but I had this healthcare at the time. I don't have mm-hmm. healthcare anymore, but I had healthcare at the time that was like 50 bucks for an ER visit or something like that. And it was okay. always made more sense to me to do that than to get an appointment because oh, they, for would, sure. they always say like, come in three weeks. I'm like, well... That yeah, so it preve- you don't want to be preventative. You just want to be like reactionary. Just wait <laughs> until after like the fireman. Just wait until there's something to put out and then you go take care of it. Anyways, I get into the ER and I tell the doctor about all the silly stuff that I've done. And they're like, yeah, you got something. We're going to give you this test, right? So I pee in this uh, cup. They go out, they give it a test. They come back and they say, it tested negative technically, but you definitely have something. Like it's like something maybe that just like doesn't show up on these tests. So we're going to give you the shot. And they gave me like an antibiotic in the butt. They had me pull on my uh-huh. pants and they, they shot an antibiotic in my butt. Yeah. Anyways, I leave the, the hospital and like I'm walking back to my car. And for some reason, this whole thing comes over me. I'm like, this is like the greatest day of my life. I'm like feeling so good. I'm like skipping. I'm singing songs and stuff. I'm in the car. I'm clapping because along to the radio. STD? I don't know what's going on. I'm like in the car. I'm just like, da, 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 da. I'm clapping and shit. Like, I'm like, this is uh-huh. a fuck. I'm having a blast. Yeah. The time of my fucking life. Yeah. And I get back home and I'm like, why am I so happy? I'm like exuberant. And so uh-huh. uh, I tell my friend again, the doctor, and he goes, he's yeah, still dude. playing video games at this point. Like he yeah, hasn't gone to his practice. Uh, <laughs> no. Like no, there's, he's a pediatrician like and crazy. kids are dying yeah. all across uh, Pacifica. I, I said, guys, give me one round. I'll be right back. Anyways. Uh, this was Dr. Disrespect, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he tells me that apparently when antibiotics first came out, like these injections of antibiotics, the strong ones that they give you in the butt, uh-huh. They made people feel so good. They were addictive and people would go back to the doctors to get them and that they don't know why, okay. but people get like this crazy rush of a high after they take them. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. So, I mean, but do you have to have an STD in order to get the shot? I don't like, know, but I mean, you have to contract a, a disease first and then in order to feel good. It's gotta contract a second. It's kind of some you. upside potential, right? So yeah. it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's a win you, win. You don't wear the condom, <laughs> you get the disease, then you get the shot. Pretty yeah, good. That's awesome. That's pretty good. good uh, yeah, absolutely. That's self care. All right, Keith. That. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure. Talk to you later. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had an STD. No, I haven't. That I would remember that. Keith, you're uh, you're a rock and roll star. You look like Jesus. Don't tell me you've never had an STD. <laughs> <laughs> I just masturbate a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about it. it <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's be serious now. Come on. Yeah. 
no uh, tomfoolery. So what, what we really wanted to have you on the podcast for is we're, we're, we're talking uh, dividend payouts for some of the bigger companies uh, across uh, the United States during this COVID mm-hmm. times. And how do you think the financial outlook of the U.S. is looking going forward in Q4? What do you think? I mean, you know, they, uh, I heard that the the stock market described as uh, a, a chart of white people's moods. So um, <laughs> I think that for a majority of the of the people that are uh, that have any any skin in the game, um, it's going very well for them. Uh, yeah. But you got you got people, uh, you know, like me that uh, only source of income is cameo videos. Uh, <laughs> it's a little tepid right now. Summer's a slow season. Hopefully, once we get in the fall, I'll be doing a lot more. It's not looking good for me. I know that. But it, as long as it's looking good for Facebook and Bill Gates, then that's all we need. That's what trickle down, baby. It'll, it'll trickle down. Yeah. You know yeah, how it we, works. Yeah. It yeah, goes you know what I'm work harder. I got to tweet at Elon Musk more often so he recognizes me and then, you know, gives me some money. Because it's I like, think that's the approach that everyone's taking. It, like the money goes to Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. And then every time I die, there's like a direct Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But he's got um he's got a lot of bills to pay, so we don't see much of that. I saw that video, so that picture of him with all the fucking suntan lotion on, right? I didn't see it. What? You didn't I see didn't the see Zuckerberg suntan picture? No. <laughs> it's it's Should fresh. I just Google Zuckerberg suntan? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was a joke <laughs> when I saw it. Like that like somebody photoshopped him to look like a geisha or something like that. But uh It automatically uh, fills in with just Z U C and then that filled in. <laughs> oh yeah that's that's uh is he a, he's is he a mime that's interesting what's he doing here god that's him. he's just everything about him is just so alien he just all right i don't know it's that's just him going weird surfing, to me that's, it's just weird to me that someone uh whose entire empire was built around uh you know uh, interpersonal connection and this guy seems to have no fucking idea <laughs> like how to just be a normal human being Right. Dude, I love to look at that picture. This is him on a surfing trip, right? Mm-hmm. And it's him on a, first of all, okay, so let's say you want to go surf, surfing, right? Okay. You need, you need like 50 bucks. You go to the beach, you rent a board, you re- rent a wetsuit, you get in the water, sure. right? Yeah. Zuckerberg yeah. wants to go surfing. He had to push out a bunch of people off of this island. He buys an entire portion of this island, billions of dollars. Then he gets a professional surfer, a $30,000 surfboard, a a jet boat filled with a security team. I'm and you know, oh my God, like caked yeah. on sunscreen. The yeah, I probably spent fifty thousand dollars just on this one, just on the surfing sunscreen. Lesson. Like that, yeah. that that's like SPF four hundred, and oh, you yeah, can't get that top of the line. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get that anywhere else. You can't get that at a pharmacy. That's fucking. That's so weird. And to think like all the the effort and and the the time and the money that goes into just securing a. a a surfing trip i mean he could just fucking eat shit and break his neck and die you know i mean it's all possible i don't it's crazy to think that these people have no extra protection from death no matter what their spf is do you you think this is a situation where he he rubbed that on and doesn't have anybody that can tell him no around him and he goes guys do i look okay and everybody's like yeah yeah boss (laughs) you look great you know it has to be it has yeah, to and be. there's no mirrors around, so he can't see himself. Uh, and then all of a sudden, a paparazzi photo pops up, and he looks like a clown. Okay, so yeah, this is fucking crazy. Wow. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, did did we get the story behind it? Is there a story, or he just doesn't know how to do it? The story is the dude's a fucking weirdo. That's the, <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> doesn't surprise me. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I I still want to be him. I still want to be Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I'm not changing my attitude. Yeah, you should not? go next time. Next time you guys play an outdoor show, uh, you should go out there, <laughs> caked in sunscreen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> well, you just look like you're in a black metal band if you did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to think. You just, all he needs is a little like mascara and fucking, you know, a kiss cover band. Maybe the black metal guys are ahead of the game. Maybe it's actually a sunscreen thing. Does Zuckerberg have? like butt cheek implants dude it doesn't look like a natural zuckerberg is thick (laughs) he really is dude all right my brother always sends me this meme that says uh, i'm a sick fuck i like a thick suck (laughs) 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 this is pictures of zuck's ass (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. All right. He, let's get uh, down, let's get down to business here, folks. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about Zuckerberg's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keith, I want to apologize for this podcast. Last time it was just me and you. It was much better. Bill wasn't here. You know what I mean? He's kind of dragging the whole <laughs> thing down. Yeah. Uh, it's Matt, taking a little longer. Matt talks about the, you guys and the fun that you had uh, and uh-huh. all the time and just being like, so glad you weren't there, man. So glad you weren't there. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's inappropriate. Absolutely. That's not what you're producer. Who's, are you the producer? Are you like the official producer of it? No, no. I, see, <laughs> is that what he told you? <laughs> he didn't tell you that, did he? Because we're, no, we're he supposed said to be. You were his intern. He <laughs> said you were his intern, but I figured. Yeah, I mean, we'd say co-host, <laughs> but I can't believe that yeah. that's what he's been telling uh. you. Or... <laughs> Oh uh, man! So good. <laughs> the truth comes out. Yeah, Bill, can you turn up Keith's audio levels? <laughs> yeah, ASAP, motherfucker. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you over some production notes when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so guys i'm just gonna hit mute and turn my mm. camera off for the rest of this and i'll just uh, stand by and perfect uh, yeah uh, perfect I'll, I'll thanks bob big. <laughs> <laughs> keith tell the people about uh, about your den that you're you're cooking up what oh my gosh so um a few years ago uh on warp tour i started getting into um like battle royale online gaming stuff with some uh-huh. friends that i had from twitter and um i uh uh, while the barbecues and stuff were going on, I would I had like this brief. It's like a briefcase that has an Xbox in it, and then Ethernet cables, and everything plugged it in. And I was always like playing with everybody at night. You had like put um, in like a nuclear code to get it to open up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it's the football. I had the yeah. I basically had the football working. <laughs> um, so I started getting into it, and I was like, you know, they were kind of starting to stream, and I I I, I had always kind of heard about streaming, but I thought it was going to be, I don't know. I, I just feel like if I'm not on tour the last thing i want to do is like be in front of people doing anything mm-hmm. so it never really um appealed to me but then i i started looking into it and i don't have a hobby or anything because i don't i don't like play an instrument so there's no like gear that i ever have so this was like uh, it's like a my so it, this was a gateway into like being a gearhead of some sort so then i just started like putting together a pc and learning about streaming and um it's never really gone very well there's always technical issues Um, but then just very recently I buckled down and got everything I needed. And now it is completely set up. I never thought I would be here in a, at a desk with two monitors, two PCs, two keyboard, like that. All I ever had was my laptop. So, um, I'm taking it very seriously now. And, uh, I don't know. My dream is to one day rage quit. Uh, and soil my diaper in front of you know a few thousand people. <laughs> we're, we're well on our way. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I just I've never had anything that I like have to teach myself and then know how to sort of troubleshoot. So it's a it's become a, a pretty serious hobby over the the quarantine. Yeah, dude. Uh, I've experimented with it a little bit in the past, and it's mm-hmm. super fun and interesting to try to figure it out and get it all set up uh what sort of computer did you get um so i have a uh, skytech omega um i could read you all the specs if you want me to but i'll probably need yeah like a day just and grab a half, the so. instruction manual and let's just go <laughs> piece by piece it, it is the most insane here actually i can turn this around and you can see it um so that's Ooh. there there it is but I could change the lights on it if you'd like me to. Uh, I oh, can yeah. pretty much do whatever <laughs> you guys really need me to do here. Let me check. What do we got here? Let's go. Uh, okay. Oh, you're playing that. the uh, latest Tony Hawk Pro Skater, I see. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I got a bunch of colors here, which is really all I got the computer for. It was just sort of like a how will it look to my guests coming over when it's they badass. see this, this mammoth rig. Uh, but I'm in the basement, so nobody else comes down here. I haven't got the chance to play the uh, the new Tony Hawk. When I was little, um, my neighbor, who we didn't like, got Tony uh, Hawk, and we all hung out at his house and pretended to be his friend yeah. so we could play it. I had the same kind of friend when I was little. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, I think every neighborhood probably has one of those kids. Yeah, um, and if you didn't have if you didn't have one of those kids, you were the kid. You were and, the kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I tried to be the kid for a while, like. Uh, he like when when video games first started coming out i remember like you know the just even getting like the nintendo console and sega genesis and stuff like that and i tried to keep up with him but it it seemed like his parents were adamant about keeping him one step ahead of the uh of the gaming uh community (laughs) on our street yeah yeah they they were having some conversations behind closed door they're like look little jimmy 
Little yeah. Jimmy needs the newest console. Like, yeah, you you got to get this power glove before he does. So it was very, uh, it let's got get very a, competitive. Let's get a subscription to fucking, you know, oh, Cheat dude. Code Central or whatever print magazine we can get our hands on. Let's order whatever is coming that, out. Remember those, mag- like the Nintendo magazine always had cheat codes in it, which was fucking sweet. Because then you had to like find it, you know, you, you actually had to seek it out if you wanted to cheat. It's kind of crazy how how cheat codes have just kind of gone away. Like when yeah. I was a kid, Cheat Code Central was like a huge part of my life. It was like, you know, like you buy a game, you play around for a little bit, then you look up the cheat codes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, well you, had, you had Google when you were a kid, right? Like you had yeah. the internet. Yeah. Uh, we had to actually like look in the magazines for. for well, cheat Keith, codes. I assume you still know the Contra cheat code by heart because it's uh, embedded uh, deep inside your lizard brain. Uh, oh wait, I, I think I'm thinking of the uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B. It's like start. Is that Contra? That's, or is that that's okay. that's the one. So you now have okay. 99 lives uh, in yes. order to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to to play that game, but and then there's like the Mortal Kombat Blood Code. Uh, if you had uh-huh. a Sega, uh, which what? Oh God, well I I kind of forget which one with A B A C A B B. That's what it was. Was uh, that right? Yeah, right. and then you have a uh, Blood Code for Sega Genesis, or yeah, yeah. For what the was fourth the Tyson? One. What, what was the Punch Out one? Oh, I don't know the. That one was all numbers, I believe. Uh, it's like a, almost a phone number. Uh, I'm gonna look it up later, but yeah, I, I used to remember that one too. I swear to God, I this this story is completely useless information. But um, one time when I was little, I was playing Mortal Kombat on Sega, and I just like was I was just button jamming. I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, and I swear to God, my character. Le- jumped off of the screen, the main screen, like the plane that you you fight each other on, and went back into uh, like a cave that was in the background, uh-huh. and he was moving around in there. <laughs> I have never forgotten that moment. I thought I had like cracked some top secret code, uh, but it never <laughs> happened again, and nobody ever mentioned it. So I was <laughs> hallucinating, or it was a glitch, or. Something. <laughs> Stop. You found the cheat code to make the game unplayable for th- yeah. 75 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Yeah, to get your guy off the uh, off the screen and uh, cower in a cave for a little bit until time runs out. Even like on the, the Tony Hawk game, the cheats, you just go to the game menu and you just turn them on as opposed yeah. to finding the thing, which is like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm 36 now, so I'm fine with just having that toggled. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, give me special all the time and perfect rail balance. Thanks. I don't have to For Google sure. anything. Do they have big um, head yeah. mode? Uh, oh, my God. Little person or big person. But uh, I don't really? think, that, yeah, I, I think you have to run through it once. I, I, Okay. I went through it and got everything done with Tyshawn Jordan or oh, Jones already. Um, Wait, you had the new one, Bill? Yeah, of course I do. What the, what the, what the fuck's wrong? With you? <laughs> I hear what you're talking to. What's it like? I just started. It's, 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 I love it so far. Yeah, it's it's great like because it. they've like it's not an exact replica. Like the mm-hmm. mall doesn't exist. Like it's run down because there's no malls at this point. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like oh, it's. I didn't even get there yet. Yeah, no, That's it's. Cool. Uh, and, What's uh, the soundtrack like? It's got the classics, and then it's got a couple more things added in there. You know, it's got uh, a rocker's edge to it. It's yeah. got an alternative edge. It's got a rocker's edge. There's a lot of stuff. Those American are... Nightmares on the soundtrack. Right. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah. Um, I always think about those early soundtracks where, like, they like just really stick with you, like Crazy Taxi. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, it's Crazy Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's and like I offspring. <laughs> It was yeah, yeah, Hawk. yeah, 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 <laughs> it going. Oh my god! That, yeah, the Osprey song. Tony Hawk was the the like. I found a lot of music through Tony Hawk. None of it was good, but I found some music. <laughs> Zebrahead was on there. Right. Uh, haven't heard about Zebra. You don't like the before. Tony Hawk soundtrack? That's it's like the first one. Yeah, the it's, the good one. It had like Incubus. It had Zebrahead. It had Goldfinger. It was very ska, mm. um, ska centric. I didn't really like it. <laughs> Not I feel like guy. I feel like a lot of people. Tony Hawk's uh, soundtrack, the first one and the second one, was like that's like how they got into punk. Totally, totally. It's like how Wayne's World got me into Queen because Bohemian Rhapsody was <laughs> in the back. I hadn't really listened to Queen until then. If you could just take something old and make it look cool, then it's got a second life. So good for Goldfinger. 
<laughs> so you've officially put the, your rivalry with Goldfinger to bed. Like that's what you're saying right now is yep, good for them. Yep. <laughs> I, I wish them the best. <laughs> Squashing all the Goldfinger beef. The, the, the notorious fucking. Yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been in a really big beef? No, I don't think so. You don't really um, seem like a beef heavy guy. I can't, I can't really see you just yeah, fucking going I don't really at care. it. I mean, you just, uh, it's just all, all, it's all sort of springing from uh, somebody's ego. I mean, no matter what happens in a situation like that, it's just someone, someone's jealous of somebody else. And I mean, it's very, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm just too old for that shit, I guess, but, <laughs> which is good. Um, and I'm not saying there's there's uh, there's absolutely no need for some beef, but anything that I, I felt like might have been a beef when I was a kid was just like, I mean, it, if you think of everything uh, as being sort of um, it, where like if a band's success helps out the music industry, then, you know, you're, you're that's a that's what you're a part of. So, you know, it is it is a trickle down as far as like anybody getting bigger than they were. I feel like it just helps. But. That was not. Uh, that was a major point of contention for a long time with, with beefs. I wish I thought of things like that sometimes. But in the satire game, for example, the Babylon B, their CEO uh, tweeted out a picture the other day of him hanging out with uh, Donald Trump Jr. And I was just, oh, think, yeah. I was just thinking to myself, and like the Trumps always like retweet them, and they've just grown into this gigantic thing. I can't help yeah. but be a little bit jealous. Not that I could ever do that. I can't hang yeah. out with the Trumps. I can't write fucking <laughs> insane right wing satire. But yeah, I just think sometimes I'm like, fuck, these guys are way bigger than I am. Yeah, I mean, if anything, it's just the idea that they could possibly go eat hamburgers at the White House someday, and that's not really, <laughs> in, it's not really in the cards for you guys. But no. When you start a punk satire site, you just never really get invited to the White House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that a little bit. It's interesting how different groups of people support creators and artists. Like, I feel like Christians are actually really good at it. Like, mm-hmm. if you are a Christian painter and mm-hmm. you're, like, at all decent, <laughs> there's just, like, yeah. a shit ton oh, of people who are going to support totally. you. Totally. Uh, Canadians, for example. Yeah. If you're a Canadian artist you're going to be massive no matter what, because everyone sort of rallies around you. And, you know, the government supports you, you yeah. know, there's like a, a stipend that, that musicians get in Canada for touring and spreading the word of Canada. Um, <laughs> it's a little creepy, uh, a little, you know, a little too self-contained sometimes, but um, yeah, it's, it's strange that there are such markets where everyone will go where even the lowest, common denominator goes which is very much like the republican party it's like they're all gonna they're, they're, everyone will sink together no matter what yeah because they they just stand next to each other and sort of uh eschew what everyone else is uh spitting out but um i don't i don't think that that's uh, the case very much in america uh for normal people so it's just yeah no. keep fighting <laughs> keep clawing yeah it's interesting though because it's like man it's like you do not have to be the best at satire. You just need to be right. the you best. Just have to exist uh, because yeah. they're gonna support it because yeah. nobody else will, you know. So it's yeah. just like, uh, hey, I guess that's, what, that's my theory on why there's so many stand-up comedians in Canada. Like everyone in Canada does stand-up comedy. They're always <laughs> doing stand-up comedy at uh, <laughs> lap laps, and like. It's because nobody, everyone's too nice to tell them that they suck at stand-up comedy. You know, everyone's just supporting each other. Uh, you know, like it's some sort of uh, national obligation. But we keep it real here in America, man. It's the Wild West. <laughs> yeah. You got to give yeah. us something real or get the fuck out. Absolutely. The big leagues. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Don't come with that fucking Bush League shit. <laughs> There's a lot of really great stand-ups from Canada that are like, Oh yeah, there totally are. But I mean, look at the environment that's fostered. I mean, it's so pro, it's so pro improv that yeah. um, I just feel like it's a, it's just a much more comfortable place to sharpen your teeth, I guess. And in, in a, um, in a creative Avenue like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I obviously don't really know very much about stand-up comedy, but I feel like it'd be way harder to make it in America than it would be in Canada. I know a lot of people. Once they make it in Canada, they move to America, move to the yeah. move to New York, move to LA, try they, to get yeah. big. They almost start over from the beginning too, and they go, yeah, oh, you would pretty fucking. much have to start over. Yeah, because yeah. you're coming out of Canada all gassed up. 
high on your own farts thinking you're the fucking best because you know you filled a, a chuckle a chuckle den uh you know every friday night oh that holds 125 here. people though so yeah, yeah I mean, that's... Is only about 25, so. <laughs> so uh tell me about um what it's like being a musician who can't play music i it fucking sucks man yeah it really sucks yeah um I don't even, I was kind of thinking about that today when I was driving and I, I don't even know if when I, when we get back out there, is it, am I going to feel comfortable? Like I haven't been performing in six months, which is three or four times as long as I've ever gone without uh, having a show. I don't know. I'm starting to like, I'm wondering how uh, adjusted uh, I am to like normal life, quote unquote normal life, but like home life. So touring is going to be just the, just the mental exertion of, of tour is something that you have to like, uh, you have to stratify it and it gets to the point where like you really have to push through it and you learn tricks and you, you know, you have a routine to help you deal with it. And if that's gone, if that, if that muscle atrophies, you know, I, do I have to start from, from scratch and sort of try to rebuild that touring mentality? Um, took a long time and as someone that doesn't necessarily love being away from home so much, I mean, it was a big, uh, it was a big accomplishment to get me to the point where I could tour for three months straight and mm-hmm. still come home, you know, not in a straight jacket. So mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. You it's find like, yourself just begging the family to play charades and stuff so you can get up in oh front my of God, them and yeah, do like a little yeah, performance. Yeah. The best <laughs> thing is, is my, my uh, our daughter loves music and she has like a little karaoke machine. So she always, wants to put on a concert and I'm like, F- no, step aside. <laughs> I'm the musician here. And uh, then I sing through a little frozen amp. <laughs> She's okay with it. Though. I let her play the drum. <laughs> yeah. I, I, did you guys have uh, uh, to cancel a lot of stuff? Like is it's a lockdown hit or did you, uh, were you kind of clear? We, yeah. Well, we were on, we were on a long weekend uh run of shows uh we got to play chicago uh we had two others lined up they were going to end with the code orange uh like record release show that they ended up doing on twitch um so we got we played chicago got word that night that the virus was uh it was plague like uh, uh so we had to be prepared for things to get shut down and then like as we pulled into detroit the promoter called us and um mayor had like uh, put the kibosh on any gatherings over like a hundred people or something. So we drove home and we've been home ever since. And, uh, you know, our record is recorded. Uh, so we're just sitting on it. The original date was supposed to be in September. Um, that's obviously being pushed back. Um, we're trying to figure out what to do about our Christmas show, uh, weekend. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be pushed into like a, uh, Christmas in July sort of thing next year, or if we're mm-hmm. going to try to find a way to do it virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, right. How many years have for, you been I, doing that Christmas show now? That's been going on for a while, right? Yeah, we've been doing uh, a special Christmas time show for about 10 or 11 years, but it's only been, this This will be our, like, our, I think our third year of doing like a, a big blowout in a bigger venue because we would just like play shitty little uh, DIY places around town um, or do like four shows in a row at this one moderate size venue. And then we're going to go play a you know, like a basement somewhere else and just kind of pack it all in. But we figure with people traveling now and the weather being so shit, we might as well just make it all in one spot and just bring everything there. So um, just when we fucking hit our stride too, last year was so awesome. And we're like, oh, we got all these notes for next year. We know what we're doing. And then no can do. Yeah, man, you guys did a great job building up like a culture around that thing. It's like, it's become such an event. Like it's all over my social media when it happens of just all these different people coming out and just like, it's cool when bands become a part of people's identity. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. You guys have, have reached that level where people are like coming to just fucking celebrate you guys and all your friends and the, that little community and culture. Totally. There's, yeah, it's very, um, very humbling and it but it's also like uh i mean we could be very modest about it and and think like okay well no i mean if you put on a show for like a full weekend it kind of looks like you know you're you're trying to fucking flex and we're not you know we don't want to do that but gotta be honest like people are traveling it's buffalo in the winter the weather sucks you know the city 
um, is not a, a booming metropolis. So like any, any business we could bring to local stuff. I mean, it's just, it, it's great. And we're really thankful for it. So, so go ahead. Sorry. I kind of cut you off. Like I remember one time we were at punk rock bowling and uh, turbo Negro was playing and they've got mm-hmm. all these fans that have like, they all have like back patches on and shit. They're like, yeah, they're like yeah. juggalos. I yeah. love yeah. fucking turbo, turbo juggins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Andy is, Andy is a member of that turbo Negro. Uh, fan club awesome. i guess like yeah you have to get like initiated and, do you what what is the initiation is it blood in blood no out fuck. sort of thing yeah, like, yeah. yeah i have no fucking idea <laughs> i have no idea it probably has to do with how how uh prolific your mustache could be because then <laughs> andy's got that covered yeah since he was like eight years old <laughs> what's it been they, like they sought him out because of his yeah. mustache like <laughs> yeah. i've never even heard the band but uh... yeah. i also noticed that they all have back patches but their name is like jumbled on the back half so that they don't get beat up like walking around in public like it, sa- it says like turbo like Giagro or something like that. Oh, it's yeah. all the same or letters. Juggin, like the Turbo Juggend is, uh, I think, what the 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 fan club is called. I yeah, wish that, I could... that that's what I've seen on all the patches. I think that's what you're thinking of, Matt. And then yeah. they'll usually have like the city that they're from, like underneath it. Yeah, Makes yeah. Sense. Good call. I'm surprised yeah. they haven't gone through that um, that you know process that bands go through now, where it's like we. Kind of regret naming our band Black Pussy. Right. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it's called Turbo now. <laughs> it's just Those, called... That Black Pussy's a really good fucking band, though. But <laughs> I have seen them. Play. I have seen them play. I've never seen them. Um, They're great. There was another one that had to make a statement like that that was really particularly the Dixie f- Chicks. <laughs> <laughs> the Dixie Chicks drop Dixie. Uh, Lady Antebellum. Lady uh, Antebellum. How about that fucking story? They they changed their name to Lady A and then sued the Lady A that already existed. That's cool. It, it's so fucking insane. Like, oh, all right, hey, you did something, and then this uh, this woman of color that's been performing under that name for forty years, you have now sued her for the rights right. to her own name. Like, she can get the fuck oh out of the way, God. as far as I'm yeah. concerned. I love that conversation in like you know in private. Then being yeah. like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. I mean, they're doing it all for the optics of it. I mean, it's obviously it's it's good to change the name, you know, if if there's any ties to to that uh, our sorted past. Um, but then to go after uh, a, a a woman of color who had the name and try to fucking give her a cease and desist and just <laughs> oh my god, fucking was it the, entertainers and such shit has. Was it the band Slaves that had to go through this recently? Yeah. And they were Ooh, like, I don't know. They're they like changed their name. Yeah, okay. they were like we. Done. not sure what we meant when we named it yeah, it's like yeah, well yeah. pretty clear <laughs> yeah yeah it's best to just scrap that just dump it and stuff look over. i can't really i can't really criticize though i played in a band called skull stomp um mm-hmm. and our, our logo was a guy stomping another guy's skull pretty badass R- right really yeah wow. but then That's we realized cool. later that the first letters of each word is ss and that stomping on oh. people's heads definitely has connotations so not good right not yeah good. so yeah. you like my, uh, you, you kept being like uh skull stomp 88 for some reason and you're just like a bunch the year of i was born bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I had a um my first band in high school uh was uh called execute everyone from poland um <laughs> we had to change that <laughs> but then i was like well i'm 100 percent polish so i kind of get i get the pass you know <laughs> yeah, of course yeah i yeah. argued that for a little bit but we ended up changing it <laughs> yeah you reclaim it you know yeah. <laughs> uh it, there was uh we're on the uh topic of something and there was something i was going to say but completely went out of my brain as soon as i started talking so hey uh, that's why you're the producer yeah you're not yeah. used to being you're not I used just, to being uh behind the mic all the time yeah i just wanted to jump in and say you guys are doing great uh <laughs> <laughs> level sound good yeah and back to the interview <laughs> <laughs> Are you where are you guys now? Just still I mean, are you guys like have you left your, your respective cities or anything? Are you guys doing anything cool? Because I have no fucking idea what to do with my life. I am still in Pacifica. Mm-hmm. Um same spot I was living at the first time I met you at your guys' yeah. show in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Bill's in LA. I think Bill's about to move. Yeah, I mean just 
one mile down the street from where I am, so I will still uh, be in Los Angeles. Uh, but uh, how are the fire? How, I mean, what's the what's the situation with the fires out there? Are you, it's are you guys worse for where Matt is. They're all up yeah. in uh, the yeah. central, the northern California. I mean, today is all gray skies, so I'm seeing smoke, but uh, LA is not currently on fire. Uh, it was smoky for a couple of days, and then it cleared up, and then it got smoky again. Uh, I woke up one time, I had like a window open, and in the night, like the smoke had gone to my house, and my eyes were all stingy. It's not great. Jesus Christ, man. Tell me about, tell me about your new record. You guys recorded it, um, and you're sitting yes. on it. What's yes. it like? What's it about? Um... It's, uh, I mean, I could say it, it's more uh, topical uh, than any of the other records, just sort of because it's impossible to not be informed by, you know, the news and the world. So That sounds a little scary, um, Keith. Are you guys like, hopefully you didn't make it too topical. Is it like, here's, here's the good thing is it like, we, we, uh, it will always be topical. Okay, okay, good. At least you didn't make, I feel like the news is moving so fast nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, got, no, you, you guys will come you out with... Something yeah. like just it wasn't about pretty much count on a, a, a cop killing a, a person of color, no matter what era. So, um, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's not specifically about any any stories in the news or anything, but I mean, it's it's definitely impossible to not be upset or angry or you know really really saddened about uh, the the state of the country and the world. So, um, I found that I was more than I, I ever remember doing just talking more about um sort of the grander scheme of of you know what this could possibly all mean um no and, real deep dives but and how to keep america great in 2020 and yeah and how to make it great again and keep it great at the same time are there any punk bands that are super pro trump, trump? Uh, gutter, uh, yeah. gutter mouth is kind of a i don't know if they're still active but they're kind of a band that's like so really? anti PC that they would be on the side of what was Trump that band and- One Life Crew that they that guy had a bunch of in 2016 he had a bunch of videos they put out it was like support the fucking president <laughs> mm, that's so good I know Traps got into some stuff online uh, yeah, yeah. So Traps was uh, he was going ham as far as uh, his support for uh, a homophobic misogynistic agenda um, I know that uh, Norma Jean the singer is. Um, he he put out some uh, some tweet disparaging the the BLM movement. Um, I don't know. I uh, I don't know where they they stand personally, but I know that that any sort of, of I don't know any sort of joking about stuff like that at a time like this when you have a platform to to really do something positive is kind of I don't know. There's no, uh, there's no room for that right now, you know. So yeah. as a person that you know that has like created music over the like. Do you, in being active on Twitter, do you ever have somebody who's like, I'm a huge Every Time I Die fan, but, you know, I'm really shocked that these are your politics as if they wouldn't know that you are yeah. anti homo Like, it's like, where if, do you think I stood? Shocked, yeah, yeah. If they're shocked, they were never a fan of me. I mean, it's it's just such a fucking, it's such a lazy tactic uh, to, when outraged is to say that you had supported and now you're retracting support when you never, <laughs> there was no support there to begin with. So you're, right. you're asserting that this false claim that you liked us to assert another false claim that you're no longer liking us and you're back at square one, just leave me the fuck alone. Like, I don't need to know that you <laughs> pretended to like us only to pretend not to like us now. Just shut the fuck up. I don't need to know that stuff. Um, but yeah, if anybody's shocked, they, they weren't really paying attention. I just don't, I don't fucking understand how you can grow up in the punk or hardcore community and have a pro Trump mindset. I mean, it is the antithesis of everything that, that the scene was, was founded on. So I feel like if, if that's the case, and if you are very uh, Republican or, or pro Trump, then um, I don't think you ever really had, had it in your heart to begin with. I mean, I don't mean to sound like a, like, uh, a Puritan of any sort, but um, it's just hard to believe that you could grow up with the people that you know everyone on the scene has grown up with, and and walk uh, and walk away in 2020 feeling like you are on the side of uh, of the government right now. Here's what I would I say: just get standing the cops. It's like center, <laughs> and then all the way to the furthest left, you could be punk, right? Mm-hmm. And then like center to right you can't really be punk anymore. But if you go insane, right, to the point where you're just babbling yeah. about nothing and you believe 9-11 was an inside yeah. job, and 
That's actually pretty punk. Pretty punk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, <laughs> I mean, like if you're just a straight up uh, lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you're pretty much just uh, an anarchist lunatic. Then yeah, yeah, that's pretty fucking punk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, so, I get. I honestly, I do get that. Like, I I hate the Democrats. I, I absolutely do. But what people don't understand is that that doesn't mean that I love Republicans. I just, yeah. you know, they're, they're both, it's, it's all shit. Um, and there's really n- no chance of us making any change if it's not through, uh, uh, you know, a civil revolution. So um, I, I think that people think that hating the Democrats is sort of serving uh, the Republicans agenda, but it's, it's just the, I, I mean, it, it just seems so obvious that the, the, the people that need the help are not getting help by any party. So um, yeah. I don't think it's too, too far left to say that you disagree with both parties but i think that's how a lot of people are framing it is that if i don't vote for biden it's a vote for trump but i i biden's a piece of shit too we know that and you know the fact that we just had to vote for lesser two evils kind of sucks it's a weird thing man because i feel like there's this whole you know we run a satire site and we'll come up with a joke about biden which i feel like is a good joke it's just like a solid critique and Uh there's always some comments of people being like oh yeah so you guys support trump it's like, there's not yeah. an either or. Like, first right, of all, we, yeah. we like making fun of everyone. But second yeah. of all, it's like, this guy's worthy of criticism. You of know? course he yeah, is. He's not of the course. savior of progressive no. culture by uh, God, any no. means. And that's the thing, too, is that I, I think of people, a lot of people assume that everyone on the left looked at Bernie as the savior. And that's not true at all. Bernie's a fallible human being. You know what I mean? Like, his agenda was far more progressive uh, than anyone, at least in my lifetime, has ever seen. Um, it was refreshing. Uh, he, he felt trustworthy, uh, which is a feeling you don't get from a lot of politicians. Um, but he's just a human and it's not about who he is. It's about the, the message he was sending and the, and the, um, the legislation he was trying to get passed. I mean, and, uh, you could swap him out with anybody. It's, it's okay. As long as they sort of, uh, stay tethered to that radical, uh, progressivism, um, but it's a, it's just so fucking strange to see what the right thinks that the left truly believes. Like, you see, you call Trump the rapist that he is, and they're like, oh, well, so it was Bill Clinton. You know, yeah, of course, he's a piece of shit too. What? I cannot like Trump. I don't have to love the Clintons because I don't like Trump. I mean, he's, there's enough room in my head that I can occupy these. Well, spaces you don't have to like the Clintons, but you are paid by them to say that about yeah, Trump. Yeah, of course, admit I admit that Obviously. much, right? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is all. I'm getting. Uh, I, I have a little meter uh, on my computer screen. How many times I, I uh, say a good word about the Clintons, and I get like a dollar and a half. I think Soros, time. dude. It's the yeah, Soros. Soros I, I wish Soros would support us a little bit more. You know what I mean? For like, real. For real. The, I mean, the, you know, the cops the, are dressed like the the military, and the protesters have like garbage can lids. Like they're, the, you know, it, it, it looks like. They're like a ragtag group of uh, of kids from the 1960s just playing superhero. Like, if Soros were to fund us, we'd have a lot of fucking better equipment. I, I don't know. Here. I disagree. I was over at Antifa headquarters the other day. And yeah? And they're, they're, I mean, that's pretty decked out over there. I mean, Okay, yeah. It's been a while since I've been there. But, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's looking good. A nice 42-inch flat screen they just installed. <laughs> so... You better believe they it. Got a doing okay. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something for uh, right wing non progressive culture just for a second? Flat mm-hmm. screen TVs. Oh boy, have they gone down in price? Really nice. Yeah. Really ever? nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Keith, I seem to remember that you had some problems with a flat screen oh, TV not too long ago. Vizio. Yeah. yeah. Ever. <laughs> this was but, actually this was th- this ended up being um a a lesson learned about the the strength in numbers um because earlier that day i had a tv that was broken sent it back they said they're gonna send me a new one for half the price charged me sent me a new one the new one literally said damage down the box i opened it up and (laughs) fuck this crap um big black flag fans that's all they were Uh, yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly so i i had left for tour so i couldn't really deal with it uh came back uh like a week later finally dealt with it. They're like, you didn't call in the right amount of time. I'm like, it says I have like 14 days. It's day 14. They're like, no, it's day 14 business days, but you only had 14 total days. Can't do anything. Sorry. Pretty much fuck off. Uh, then I just went to Twitter and the, someone from Vizio called me. I don't even know how they got my phone number. Unless it's on record, maybe <laughs> called my cell phone 
and uh, they have everyone's number, <laughs> dude. If, if Vizio wants to call me to talk to me about sending me a new TV, I'll, I'll they answer. call you through the TV. You're just like trying to make it work, and then their face <laughs> yeah. pops up. They're like, Keith, yeah, <laughs> stop <laughs> tweeting negatively about us. <laughs> I, I actually felt bad. She was so apologetic, but then I just remembered like the, the power trip that the uh, the guy was going on who I had to actually complain to and stuff, and he was he was tripping out. He he was a uh, cock of the walk that day, but then his, uh, <laughs> his higher up went around and got in touch with me directly, and I got a new TV. Out of the Did you, you know? I have to assume you said to this uh, woman that called you, "said I want his ass on a platter." And you know, oh, I get- did, I did. <laughs> I, I wanted ass everywhere. I told her all the places I wanted his ass. <laughs> it's actually how the whole conflict started. Is that he? He asked for ass when he was yeah. ordering the TV. It was yeah, really I inappropriate. Didn't, I didn't have the ass in the place I needed it. <laughs> you guys want to hear my customer service nightmare that happened to me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so you have, you're have you talking with your doctor friend while playing video games. Your, <laughs> your, your, your neck gets a little game. stiff. Okay, guys, yeah. see this see this brand right here? Fred Perry. I wear mm-hmm. it all the time. been wearing it my whole life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, this undershirt, my uh, skinhead friend gave it to me after he grew out of it or he shrank it on accident or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I I'm feeling good. I'm feeling whoo. All right, time just to treat. Just had the shot. Yeah, yeah. just had the shot from your chlamydia. Just had the shot, chlamydia. I'm clapping. I'm on my way mm. back to the car. Mm. I'm like, treat myself to a little something, right? So I go on FredPerry.com. I go to the sales section. I'm loading up, boys. I'm talking sweatshirts. Mm. I'm talking oh fucking God. I can shoes. smell the bargains from here. Yeah, you're going uh, yeah. head to toe here? You're going I'm, from your hat no. to sock? I got socks. <laughs> I got sweatpants. I'm getting 50, 60, 70% off. These are $200 fucking shoes for 50 bucks. Woo, boy. Be a All right. not to. Yeah. I'm, I'm ordering them. I'm ordering <laughs> lots of them. Maybe 300 bucks worth, but it's a lot of stuff. Okay? Uh, I order it. Cool. I get an email a couple of days later. Congratulations. Your delivery is... Uh, has been delivered and here's a picture of it on the front porch <laughs> of some address i do not recognize in a city uh, i don't recognize in california just the wrong place not like oh a couple numbers went wrong just yeah, the wrong yeah. place right oh damn it i hit them up they don't respond to me they say covid we can't get to you sorry wait and then i go to hit them up again a couple of weeks later and they say if you if you ping us again we put you in the back of the line we simply oh can't my god get to you. like they're like a stop bothering me yeah and <laughs> oh then eventually god. Weeks go by. It's like maybe, I don't know, four or five weeks since I since this thing was delivered to the wrong place. They say, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to look for it and we're going to try to find it. I'm like, dude, you delivered this five weeks ago. There's no way this guy's just giving this thing back. Right. His yeah. whole family is decked out in Fred <laughs> yeah, Perry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see him strutting around. I'm a basic ass dude too. So it's all mm-hmm. medium. It's all like size 11 shoes. He's just wearing the stuff, right? <clears throat> yeah. They say, a couple days later, they say, okay, UPS, we couldn't find it. I go, okay, no shit. They say, so we're just going to give you a refund. And I go, well, guys, check it out. That's not quite the same thing because I got all these hot deals on the sale, right? Right. So I'd save 300, 400 bucks. Now you're telling me I don't get that back. And they said, nope, sorry. And sale items are gone. Dude. Bullshit. (laughs) You should have made it like you should have at least requested they send you the money full, like full price of what the items would have been. They wouldn't do anything. I tried. I was like. I was like, can I please just get those items? Can I please get uh-huh. a discount on those items? Or can I get the sale discount on similar items? No, no, uh-huh. no, no, no. They said, fuck off, COVID. Everyone just that says that now. Just, no, matter yeah. what, no matter what you're doing. Sorry, man, COVID. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, man, COVID. <laughs> so I can't return your text for two weeks. Uh, yeah. COVID, yeah. COVID's been fucking um, me up, bro. I actually had a, a situation happen to me yesterday. Uh, I was sitting at uh, my computer. Uh, I was uh, leveling up some guns because it was double XP weekend. On COD. Friday. So there I am leveling oh, up. I thought this might be Tony X Pro Skater. You're leveling no, up no, guns. No, no, I'm I like, wait to- a second. Yeah, yeah, there's a cheat where you can get guns in Tony X. <laughs> um, you can only use it on phone- the school levels for some yeah. reason. It's really Ooh. dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my phone starts going like vibrating few times i'm like okay it's one of those people that cuts their texts into like six different messages in a row and then it just keeps going off I'm like what the fuck is going on uh, emails 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 coming from russia from italy <laughs> all these emails i'm like what in the fuck is happening 270 emails within four or five minutes um so i'm like okay something got hacked i don't know what the fuck's going on so i check my bank account they're fine check my paypal my paypal had been emptied 
And uh, I looked this up and what happens is people get into your PayPal, take your money and then spam bomb you. So you never notice the alert from PayPal because it's buried in there. Mm. Um, so that happened to me. I lost $400 yesterday and got signed up for a bunch of newsletters in my show, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but the guy that stole my PayPal money, uh, his, his shipping address is in there now. So, so are you taking talk- a trip to Russia? Yeah, uh, let's go. <laughs> no, he lives in yeah. he lives in Van Nuys. Actually, I was going to ask if you mind. Uh, oh, by there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not we'll that far by. away. Uh, okay. So <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's about a forty minute drive, and I've okay. been looking to fight somebody lately. So yeah, well, there's uh, according to the uh, the mortgage, there's twelve people living there. Uh, they're Easy. all from Russia. So yeah, no problem. Yeah. So what are you going to say, Matt? Maybe we become the irresponsible podcast. You just drop that address and we see what right. happens. Some, <laughs> <laughs> some crazy Buckley fan just goes ham on them. Watch, no, it's I just like not. a fake address too, right? It's just a nice family. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to send anybody over there. Well, you just got to tweet uh, out at, at Russia uh, that, you know, <laughs> you guys this and you'll get uh, somebody, a nice customer service agent from Russia will apologize. Look, I'm going to see if I can find any of the, I know I, I went through and deleted them. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. This one's from Spain. Uh, oh, mandamento me difficile de seguir. I don't know yeah. if anybody knows how to translate that. It's from Vinicius Pinheto. Of okay. course. Yeah. Yeah. New one that just came in, so. Keith, let's talk a little bit about the project you and I have been cooking up. Um, let's fucking do this. Let's do it. So, this. you know, hard times, we've always wanted to get on Twitch, but we've never really done very much of it. And then I realized my friend Keith here, who's a hard mm-hmm. times writer, is yep. the next biggest Twitch star bar none. This Obviously. guy is rocketing yeah. to the fucking moon my over here. My day is coming. Tony Hawk <laughs> Pro Skater, Call mm-hmm. of Duty, fucking I Russian. I got Toilet Manager. <laughs> I got a game called Toilet Manager for uh, for Steam that I'm really looking forward to playing. Is, where you is that like a, a lot of toilets? Yeah, is that just like a plumber training vi- like uh, industrial yep. video that you found and uh, yep. they call it a game? Yeah, yeah, it's it's just like the uh, it's just like the video that they play you when you get a job uh, that your first day of plunging toilets and they they make you watch this video. <laughs> I just happen to think it's a game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's. I got some really good ones. I'm excited about this project um, because. So okay, you know what? You didn't even finish setting it up. You set it up. I got too excited about. Magic. Basically, what we're doing is we're doing the Hard Times Twitch channel with the co-founder, owner, CEO of Twitch, Keith Buckley. Yeah, <laughs> and the creator of Hard Times, Keith Buckley. He actually owns both platforms, and he's yeah, merging them together perfect. for it's Hard Times for on yep. Twitch. All I profit, think no overhead. This podcast is gonna <laughs> this podcast is gonna come out on like um let's just say it comes out right before the Twitch thing launches. It's fucking okay. perfect. We nailed this timing. And Absolutely. so people who are listening to this Call podcast can go to Keith Buckley's Twitch channel and check it out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, we're at, we're we're making a whole new channel for this. I'm not even I'm not even gonna piggyback this off of my old channel. I'm just gonna I'm going to shut that one down. I'm going to take Ooh. everything I have and I'm going to put it into the new one. And then we're just going to build on that. So that's the whole plan. Like, these are the things that this, this is all of our meetings before this was just, yeah. Step yeah, one, just, step two, <laughs> step three. Yeah. Although yeah, it would be a I'm, shame I'm to see the stream of piss shut down. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Quite I'll the day you had there. My will. Yeah. I'll leave it to my daughter. And my will. Uh, she can take it over <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited about this because I, uh, I, I, it's weird when I get to make my own schedule, I don't really ab- abide it very much mm-hmm. because I'm always finding excuses to not do shit. Um, but when I, uh, someone else tells me to do something, I do it like really well and, and really efficiently. So I, I essentially need you to, uh, to be an authoritarian. Uh, I need you to tell me my schedule and then it's just going to be the best thing you've ever seen. It'll so be I, I like having a schedule now. Midnight and you'll get a call. Right? Keith, yeah. wake up. Get on. Get on. Yeah. Get Tony yeah. Hawk up and running. <laughs> your, to- your toilets and toilet manager are overflowing. I'm <laughs> um, fucking stoked, though, because me it's, too, something, man. it's something Bill and I have always talked about wanting to do, but we just mm-hmm. kind of never got around to it, probably because we just kind of have a lot of other shit going on. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Bill plays uh-huh. um, Fallout, right? Yeah, I, so I suck at video games so fucking bad matt you saw me try to play call of duty like i mean there was no chance that i was what do you mean what one was that 
on the book tour last year when at my brother's house, like when oh, you guys. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there's. It wasn't like oh. Yeah, you you know you're just not used to the controls. It was mm. just fucking awful. It was genetic. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's beyond well, the that's controls. The <laughs> I, there's so many Twitch streamers that are good um, at what they do, and people tune in to see them do like, um, so, you know, surreal. Get the surreal wins. Do these fucking trick shots. And not me. I stop. <laughs> I get pissed off, uh, and I usually quit uh, or bite the controller or throw the controller or all of those things. <laughs> and uh, I think that is where the magic is going to be for our stream. Absolutely. It's how bad can I suck until I fucking scream and quit? This um, heated gamer moments. People like moments. that stuff. Yeah. People like yeah. People like those heated gaming moments. So it'll be trending pretty quick. It will be like this oh, is yeah. the this is the yeah. podcast of us be like this is a great idea. Then it'll be like, yeah. Look next week. Smash I had no podcast. idea. I had no idea. Keith believed those I didn't things. Know we knew those words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but toilet manager was not going well. He was under a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see that happening. I get mad at my own toilet. Imagine how it's going to be when I'm on stream trying to fix something like that. <laughs> it's going to be sick too though because i think a lot of what we're going to do is we're going to have interesting people on there join you and play games with you or just yeah. hang out um and yeah so if you're you're a fan of all the hard time shit keith actually wrote some of our better articles if you went to the thanks bud um uh, yeah, you have one of Riot the most Fest. popular ones of all time the uh rockabilly child i do yeah really? the, yeah that uh Excellent. You know, like child of rockabilly parents has no idea what the fuck is going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, like, that's an all time. Yeah. That's an all timer right there. Actually, that was my first one too. I came out of the gate hot and then just dribbled it. Dribbled it after that. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people didn't know that about. They're like, oh, you have Keith Buckley writing for the site. It's just because he's Keith Buckley because he plays in these mm -hmm. bands and stuff. I was like. Keith, when you first pitched, I don't know who Keith Buckley is. So I was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I was like, we should add this guy. He's got good headlines. People are like, is that Keith That's Buckley? Great. I'm like, well, I don't know who Keith Buckley is. So <laughs> I, I honestly love that because uh, it, then it's on my merits, which um, absolutely also Dude, when, greatly inflated. At Riot Fest, when we put up those um, yeah those cutouts of the yeah. headlines, it was your rockabilly one was the one that everyone was clawing to get That's their awesome. faces in. That's awesome. It's been such a great fucking experience, and uh, I mean, I, I I I go very long in between like submitting uh, headlines, but I'm just so like, I don't know, I, I I if I were to to put in every idea I had and submitted it, I mean, you guys would it would be like the Fred Perry thing of like, look at if you fucking bug me again, you're going to that <laughs> line, like stop fucking doing this. So I really like gotta sit with it for a while and uh, you know let it percolate. But I mean, the idea that you know, now we work together and, and get people on the stream and talk to them about hard. You know, I, I would love to have uh, hard times writers on there as well. You guys, yeah, obviously, and um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, people that play video games, that listen to music, and that like comedy, uh, and that's an untapped demographic. So Keith, this is it. What the fuck else is there to do right now, <sighs> dude? <laughs> well. You could do what I did for the first two months and drink vodka out of the bottle from the moment you wake <laughs> up until the moment you pass out. But I am now two months sober, actually. Oh yeah, good for you, man. Yeah. What made you What yeah. made you do the switch? It was getting really, really bad, really yeah. dark. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there were times when I was drinking at like because I I get up early normally, but like uh, you know, drinking by like eleven in the morning, and then I'm just useless and just like the stars was, born, bro. Just fucking yeah, you're a rock star, <laughs> rock star lifestyle. Have you know. haven't seen it? No, no spoilers. No. There's this no, epically right, now talented now I, singer. Now I know a star gets born. <laughs> There's an epically talented singer who is cursed by his affliction of drinking. Mm -hmm. But then he overcomes it and he starts a Twitch channel on the hard times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like when you got um, Yeah, it was it was bad, um, but I just didn't like see how I could fucking make it through the days without something because it was just like I was so not used to it, and you know, just a, a complete change uh, in lifestyle and behavior. So I didn't uh, didn't deal with it very well and started drinking. And then what the scariest part was um, when I stopped drinking. Uh, the withdrawals like that when mm. I was when I had withdrawals when I stopped drinking I was like I was doing more damage to myself than I fucking realized so what was it like um, just constant cramping um, like vomiting and if I wasn't vomiting it was just dry heaving and mm. you know like the chills and stuff I mean it was everything that 
you, you know, you, you, you hear about and you're like, Oh, well, I don't drink that much. That person's got a fucking problem. But, um, once I stopped, I realized that it had gotten pretty serious. So yeah, when your body's yeah. not getting all those nutrients from that alcohol, it's a real, yeah. a real shock. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, I didn't get my, uh, my, my fruit intake, uh, a slice of lemon with a vodka and soda. So, you know. Is anyone in your band straight edge? Uh, no, no, no. Um, Andy was for a very long time. Um, but, uh, he, well, he, he likes marijuana now. I'll just say that. That's a lot. That's a very common route that people take. It's not even a drug really anymore. I mean, it's not fun unless it's illegal. And if it's legal, then it's not, it can't really be a drug. So maybe it's just right. Maybe they'll still count that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll let it slide. There's a, yeah. in 2025 the straight edge elders have to have another meeting uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. so <laughs> until then it's still uh, not allowed uh, but after 2025 it's going to be whole all reassessed good, we'll good yeah, yeah that's what they're waiting for that's when I'm waiting to uh, to officially go straight edge too. I feel like <laughs> we kind of did a slippery slope thing here where the straight edgers had been um, too much labeled as like uh, party poopers. And uh-huh. so when, when like CBD came around, people were like, we're uh-huh. cool with it. It's no big deal, right? Like we yeah. like to have, yeah, your body yeah. aches. What's the difference between <laughs> medicine? And that's where they fucking got us, right? Because now yes. they're like, well, what's the difference between CBD and marijuana? It's just good for you, man. It cures cancer right. or whatever. And you have to be cool with it. But what yeah, we should so have CBD done. CBD is actually the gateway drug. Not we should have started <laughs> slapping CBD out of people's hands and say no. You're right. Uh, so yeah. yeah. so your name, Matt, uh, kill you your make local a valid- CBD dealer. Matt doesn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to get that on a shirt. Uh, yeah. uh, Matt doesn't realize is that what he's saying is all true, but me being so militant straight edge, I've been at every Whole Foods throwing hemp milk into the garbage. Like that's how far <laughs> that I go. Uh, like I won't even. Have you had CBD, Bill? No, no, I haven't. Would uh, you have I... CBD? Does so it do if... anything? No, yeah, it, it doesn't. It literally, it doesn't do anything. If my my girlfriend for- always gives it to me. She's like, you have a headache here? Take-. She like rubs CBD on my forehead and stuff. It does nothing. It's a leaf. Yeah. 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 If my options for pain management were prescribed opioid or CBD, then I'm going CBD all day. But Let currently- me tell you something, Bill. CBD does not have the same all effect right. as a prescribed opioid. Yeah, <laughs> no. yes. If you need a prescribed opioid, I would recommend you take one. <laughs> and if you don't want to take it, I'll give you my address. So you can just shit me off <laughs> I'm just going to drop uh, it off at a house in Van Nuys and be like, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, so when I stopped, uh, stopped drinking, I did start getting, uh, dabbling in the, uh, the marijuana scene a little bit. And I'm trying to, trying to learn about that a little more because for me, it's, um, it's either, it does nothing except like give me a little bit of cotton mouth or it, I, I have like, I'm in an existential tailspin on my couch until five in the morning. So I have to find the balance and I haven't really he- found that yet. That kind of sounds entertaining. Maybe we should. Oh, I am going to stream high for sure. Should we get like a Bob Marley flag behind you? I mean, we need to we need to pick up as many dishes. I could literally be playing and be streaming from a Bob Marley concert on the green screen. So we got to pick up as many niche audiences as we can. Keith Buckley, renowned fucking Rastafari. Yeah, renowned Rastafarian. Uh, See that. (laughs) <laughs> because, yeah i uh i i intend to uh to play high because i ha- that's one of the things i haven't done yet is uh try to game off while uh high on, on this is going to be a really intense project playing video games while stoned this is that's, I, i'm worried about that i yeah. am worried about that it's a heavy because workload the whole, the, the whole thing about being uh, yeah, wait know, has like that been drugs? attempted before have people attempted to play video games while high before or is this going to be like i don't new know time maybe we're this might be something new <laughs> we should book it like it's a fucking uh extreme endurance thing like uh that guy who just went up <laughs> on the balloons Oh, David Blaine. David, we yeah. should book it like it's a David Blaine <laughs> fucking endurance event. <laughs> Absolutely. I would be passed out after like the second puff of a normal joint. Uh, I don't do too well. But I, I feel like the like in high school when people are smoking marijuana, the, the big thing is like they don't want anybody else to know. Like everyone's going to know I'm high and they start freaking out. But so sitting in front of a Twitch stream and streaming while high, obviously everybody's going to know. So if that like residual fumes of that, like that inner voice saying like, dude, everyone knows you're high. If that still freaks me out a little bit, it's not going to be good for this. It's not going to be good for the stream. I'll tell you that much. 
fun. I, I can't no wait for out. this stuff, man. Like, look, either you're going all the way to the top or it's crash and burn. Mm-hmm. Either way, oh. it's going to be entertaining. I think people should check it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, too. And then if I crash and burn, then there's a possibility of a redemption arc where I can fucking really, you know, pull myself up by the bootstraps and dive I feel like some, take I feel toilet like, management pretty seriously. I feel like as we... uh as we like promote it, we should have a bunch of people cut uh, like a tribute video where they like take mm-hmm. their cell phones and they talk into the camera. But it's like it's as if you had died, and it's, mm-hmm. it's things that they're saying like that they wish they could have told you. And then, it's, <laughs> but then he started a Twitch stream, or it's like, a, or you do it like an intervention where people are talking about me like they can't believe that I've gone so low as to have a Twitch stream. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. He just didn't everyone see has that. one. He was such a quiet man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, that's like, good. Yeah, they interview locals. And neighbors after some guy goes on like a shoot he seemed happy he seemed yeah. content yeah i don't know what happened i go on the internet next he, thing i know he's he's got a twitch he's, stream it's brutal. he's in he's at a bob marley concert on yeah. green street he's, <laughs> he's eating a gummy bear that he says has five milligrams of weed in it but he's crying <laughs> i'm all for it i'm all for it yeah that'll be, that'll be fun to put together it's easy to do too yeah. i like i like the angle that it's uh it's unfortunately now he's falling on hard times and he has yeah. a Twitch stream, or like a uh, you know Keith, we love you. We need you to stop. We need you to stop streaming. That could be the follow up one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, if they keep saying he's falling on hard times, that's that's the through line. Yeah, yeah. For the stream. All right, brother. Uh, do you have anything that you want to tell people about or to check out? Nope, I haven't done shit. Cool. <laughs> by the time, by the for time now, this, for, yeah, yeah. For uh, by the time this comes out. You know, uh, we will be streaming uh, strictly for the hard times, and there'll um, be links and stuff, and we'll we'll put yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. So check that out. There's going to be merch up. Uh, there's going to be polls you could answer uh, to win some prizes. We're doing it all. It's going to be like a variety, a variety telethon. Are you locked in your house and you've got nowhere to go? Come visit Keith Buckley's yeah. Rastafarian den that he's built. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what if the marketing comes out and it's just way different than you expected oh, yeah. <laughs> so i'm just like a, a college shithead with like tons of neon signs i'm just like i'm pitching you as like a fucking tiktok house sort of creator <laughs> Ooh, that would be good that'd be really good just living with my my friends that are all meditating and working out except they're fucking hammered and you know playing tony Hawk. All right, brother. Well, it's good talking to you as always. Um, All right, man. You too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting me sit in on this. I really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> I know you got to get back to work. So yeah, uh, it was, get to it was editing, great. Bill. Yeah, yeah, it was great to get to talk to both <laughs> of you, uh, Matt. Thanks for actually answering my calls, uh, Keith. It was great, <laughs> great talking to you. Absolutely, man. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, later, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, later, All right. guys. Yeah, see ya.